Chapter 2. Money versus Fear of Failure We're at an emergency board meeting at Nestle's Boca Chica, Texas campus. The boardroom at Nestle's Boca Chica facility had been designed to evoke the interior of the company's spacecraft, sleek, minimalist, and functional. Floor-to-ceiling windows offered a panoramic view of the launch complex, a constant reminder of the company's purpose. 79 consecutive successful flights, Jordan Hayes began, leaning forward with his hands clasped on the table. By any reasonable metric, the Hermes system has proven its reliability. Noel remained silent, studying the faces around the table. Besides Jordan, the board consisted of Lena Patel, a venture capitalist who had been an early investor in Nestle, Victor Zhao, representing a consortium of Chinese technology firms, Rebecca Miller, a former airline executive who had joined the board after Nestle acquired her logistics startup, Derek Santos, a retired NASA administrator who provided valuable connections within the aerospace regulatory community, and twin brothers Thomas and Timothy Rothwell, heirs to a shipping fortune who had diversified into emerging transportation technologies. The regulatory requirement for 100 consecutive successful flights before passenger service can begin was excessively cautious to begin with, Jordan continued. Given our perfect record over the past 52 tests, we believe it's time to petition for a revision of that threshold. We're speaking with Nestle's board member, Philip. So, Philip, how does it feel to have reached 52 successful test flights? We're ecstatic, but we have more to go. Noel took a deliberate breath before responding. The 100 flight requirement wasn't imposed on us, Jordan. It was a standard we proposed to the regulatory agencies to demonstrate our commitment to safety. A commitment we've clearly demonstrated, Rebecca interjected. Each test flight costs approximately $22 million. That's nearly half a billion dollars we're spending on what amounts to redundant validation. Redundant? Noel's voice remained even, but his eyes hardened. Do I need to remind everyone of the Hermes 3 failure? or the explosion of the Hermes 5 prototype during static fire testing, or what just happened over Tainal. Those incidents occurred early in the development cycles, Thomas Rothwell pointed out. Our design has been stable for over a year now. Noel leaned back in his chair. And what do you suggest we tell the families of our first passengers if something goes wrong? Sorry we demised your loved ones, but we were in a hurry to start generating revenue. An uncomfortable silence fell over the room. Derek Santos, who was listening on the conference phone, had remained quiet until now, cleared his throat. Noel's concern is valid. Having worked at NASA during both the Challenger and Columbia disasters, I can tell you firsthand how catastrophic a single failure can be. Not just in human terms, but for the entire program. Public confidence is fragile. Noel, in his eagerness to make sure the board understood his angle, he shouted, Taylor, pull up the news. Taylor, a young kid from IT, in a back room out of sight of the board members, switched on the news on the two monitors. The team turns to watch grim footage looping across the room-wide screen, a Beanie's hypersonic launch vehicle blooming into a fireball above Tainau. Fiery debris rained on the streets below. A news ticker confirmed all 13 crew dead, 23 civilians killed, 57 injured. Good evening. Tonight, we have breaking news regarding the Neptune hypersonic launch vehicle. What was meant to be a leap in transportation has suffered a catastrophic setback. Noel muted the feed. 36 people were lost and 57 on the ground were injured. That accident has every one of our backers rattled. They want fresh guarantees or their money walks. Jordan met the worried faces around the table. Lena Patel, Victor Zhao, Rebecca Miller, Derek Santos, and the Rothwell twins. The tragedy changes nothing about our engineering standards, he said, voice steady. It does change the urgency of proving them. No one is suggesting we compromise safety, Jordan continued smoothly. But there are alternatives to completing all 100 test flights in sequence. We could, for instance, begin with a limited passenger service, perhaps Nestle employees who volunteer, or a carefully selected group of influencers and journalists who understand and accept the risks. Absolutely not. Noel's response was immediate and firm. We're not using Nestle employees as guinea pigs, and we're certainly not risking the lives of influencers for publicity. Then what do you suggest? Victor Zhao asked, speaking for the first time. Our investors in Shanghai are growing concerned about the timeline for return on investment. The Hermes program has already consumed more capital than initially projected. Noel stood and walked to the window, looking out at the launch pad where preparations for the next test flight were already underway. 
After a moment, he turned back to face the board. I understand your concerns about the financial aspects, he began. But I founded Nestle to transform global transportation, not to maximize short-term returns. If that's your primary concern, perhaps you should reconsider your investment. Jordan's expression tightened. That's not a constructive approach, Noel. We all believe in the vision. We're simply discussing the optimal path to realizing it. Then let me be clear about my position, Noel replied. We will complete all 100 test flights as planned. We will not petition for a reduction in that number. We will not begin passenger service until we are absolutely certain of the system's safety and reliability. Investors are demanding 30 more unmanned flights, Victor said. They'll freeze funds unless we comply. That's 10 extra weeks and nearly a billion dollars, Rebecca snapped. We lose first to market and bleed cash. Shh. Noel shushed the room. We agreed to 100 flights. We're at 79 flawless launches. Finish the last 21. Fast. Four flights a week. No shortcuts, but no delays. Jordan frowned. And if a single anomaly appears? Then we stop, fix it, and still beat the timeline. Silence held for a heartbeat. Then, one by one, heads nodded. Lena summed up. Four per week, five week sprint. Failure is not an option. What do you think, Noel? Noel looked around, surveying the faces around the table. I do recognize the financial pressures, so I agree with the alternative. We accelerate the test flight schedule. Instead of two flights per week, we increase to four. This would allow us to complete the remaining tests in approximately five weeks, rather than ten, without compromising our safety standards. The board members exchanged glances, considering the proposal. Can the ground crews handle that cadence? Derek asked. Proper inspection and maintenance between flights is crucial. We've been building toward this capacity, Noel confirmed. The recovery team in Paris has been doubled, and we've streamlined the inspection protocols based on data from previous flights. Ada Chen believes we can safely manage four flights per week. Lena Patel, who rarely speaks in these discussions, spoke up once more. I'm willing to support this approach, she said. It addresses the timeline concerns without compromising the safety standards that differentiate Nestle from competitors. Gradually, the other board members nodded their agreement, though Jordan's acquiescence came with a pointed caveat. Five weeks then. But if there's a single anomaly, a single delay in the schedule, we revisit this conversation immediately. Noel nodded once, accepting the terms. Agreed. Now, if there's nothing else, I have a rocket company to run. As the board members gathered their materials and filed out of the conference room, Jordan lingered behind. When they were alone, he approached Noel with the familiar mix of frustration and grudging respect that had characterized their relationship for years. You know, most CEOs would have been ousted years ago with your level of independent thinking, Jordan remarked. Most CEOs aren't the founders, primary technical architects, and largest individual shareholders of their companies, Noel replied without inflection. And most companies aren't attempting to fundamentally transform global transportation. Jordan sighed. Your vision is compelling, Noel. It always has been. But vision, without execution, is hallucination. The market won't wait forever. The market will adapt to what we create, Noel countered, just as it did with electric vehicles, solar energy, and tunnel transit. Create something superior, and demand follows. Let's hope you're right, Jordan said, moving toward the door. For all our sakes. After Jordan's departure, Noel remained in the conference room, staring out at the launch complex. The conversation had gone as expected. The same tension between vision and finances that had characterized Nestle's existence from the beginning. His phone buzzed with a message from Sophia, his current girlfriend, or perhaps more accurately, the woman currently occupying the role of companion in his life. At 32, the former model was intelligent enough to engage him in conversation and wise enough not to challenge him on substantive matters. The relationship was transparent in its transactional nature. She enjoyed the lifestyle his wealth provided, and he appreciated having an attractive, socially adept partner for the public appearances his position required. Dinner tonight? Her message read, I can be in Boca Chica by seven. Nole frowned slightly. He had intended to review the flight data with Ada and the engineering team that evening. Can't tonight? He typed back, Working late on flight analysis. We'll be in Austin tomorrow. Her reply came quickly. I'll wait for you there then. Miss you. He pocketed the phone without responding further. The pattern was familiar, 
the initial excitement of a new relationship gradually giving way to the realization that his work would always take precedence, leading eventually to resentment and separation. In one of Nestle's control rooms, Chief Engineer Ada Chen is studying re-entry data with nuclear thermal specialist Brian Kelly. Brian is at a console casting metrics onto one of the two large screens in the front of the room. He is displaying preliminary analysis of the day's test flight. The thermal protection system performed even better than expected during re-entry. The new isolation system reduced vibration by nearly 20%. Still not as smooth as a commercial airliner during cruising. We need to reduce weight without compromising thermal protection so we can increase payload capacity. Schedule a meeting tomorrow with the team. Speaking of the schedule, I heard we're accelerating to four flights per week. Yes, I was listening in on the call. Board pressure. They want to start passenger service as soon as possible. The ground teams can handle it. We've been running simulations for an accelerated cadence for months, but it will mean longer hours for everyone, including you. When have I ever not worked long hours, Ada? This company was built on caffeine and sleep deprivation. Mm -hmm. True. But even Nestle's Brainiac needs rest occasionally. When was the last time you slept more than five hours? I'll sleep when we've revolutionized transportation. For now, I'm just gonna focus on making these next 21 flights perfect. I'll let the team know about the accelerated schedule. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. As Brian left to make the arrangements, Ada returned her attention to the flight data, already identifying potential optimizations for the next test. The conversation with the board had been a distraction, but ultimately inconsequential. The path forward was clear. Complete the test program, begin passenger service, and transform the way humanity moved around the planet. Hours later, Noel stood alone in the boardroom looking out the window at the dark launch pad. On one of the monitors appeared Noel's head of security, Dev Paco. Dev says, Good, you're back, boss. Intelligence came in from Paris, Dev murmured. Someone inside the French Civil Aviation Directorate, rumor ties him to the flag carrier airlines may try to derail our first passenger mission next month. Noel's gaze alternated between Dev and the towering Hermes on pad three. Find out who. We launch on schedule, safely, and no one stops us. We have 21 flights, 35 days, and the world is watching. 